G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I'm going to review very quickly because I don't think it will take too long. I'm going to review this X160 from DYS and I had it in the showcase. People weren't that, you know, they wanted other things reviewed first but this is going to be a quick review because I've decided to go with a PPM receiver, CPPM, which means I can use a, a D4R2. I wanted to go SBUS and get lower latency but ah, it's just going to take too much time and I'm not so sure that this would warrant the effort. So I'm going to put in the D4R2, set it up to do CPPM and then we'll give it a quick fly and just see how it works. Okay the first thing I'm going to do is bind up the D4R2 and I always find it easier just to use an external battery and a switch because otherwise plugging in an XT60 while holding down the little button can be a real pain in the backside. Better get myself something to hold the button down with. So I hold down the button, Got the you can hear the Tyrannus beeping in bind mode. Turn this on, there we go, blinkety blinkety blinkety, turn that off exit from the bind mode and we should have a solid green light. There we go, solid green light, woohoo, all bound and ready to go. Of course I've got to put voltage telemetry on here otherwise my Tyrannus will grizzle and bitch and moan. And the next thing to do is plug in the lead from the CC3D to the to channel 1. And notice I've jumped the pins 3 and 4 on the D4R2 that makes it into CPPM mode. So I'm putting this the plug that has three wires on it into channel 1 and the signal wire of course should be to the outside and how do I know which one of these is the signal wire? Well all the others only have the signal wire so with the, uh, you notice we have exposed contacts on one side, see if I pull this out of here, see they have exposed contacts on one side and no contacts on the other and the writing is in fact on the top. So when I plug this in here, have the writing to the top which means that the signal wire goes to the right place, not going to have any problems there. So now that is plugged into the CC3D on the other end. Now I've got to get my computer fired up, find some coal and then set the CC3D to work with CPPM. Okay after much farting around and battling with the CC3D and clean flight I've managed to get it configured for CPPM operation with the D4R2. Now I couldn't do it through the normal uh, point and click interface on here because it simply wouldn't save it and this is the very latest version of CleanFlight. Just downloaded it to make sure I had the latest version of CleanFlight Configurator but it just would not save it. I'd tick the boxes, hit save and it would say it's saving and then it would go into reboot but it wouldn't reconnect. I had to power everything off and on again to reconnect back to the CC3D. It's not like the nays, it just didn't work smoothly and then when I did reconnect obviously it hadn't saved because all my changes were ignored but I went into the command line interface and I was able to issue some command line instructions which enabled me to switch this over to the PP, CPPM interface. So what a lot of farting around and this means anything I want to change on this board with this setup I've got to do it through the command line interface and then I've got to power everything down, not the PC, but power down the mini quad and power it up again before it will start talking to the computer again. It's just so crappy. It's just Oh, that's you know I mean okay I finally got a CC3D to work but it was such a battle and even now if I want to make changes tune the PIDs or something it's not going to be easy let's hope the already tuned or the pre-tuned version of this controller actually works as it should but there we go it's all set ready to fly now I'm charging off a battery I'll do a 800 milliamp hour battery I'm going to use the stock antenna because that's what they sent so I'm going to test it with that got the props on and uh, I've just left the connectors spare connectors hanging out the back of the frame there they shouldn't get into trouble and I've just used a zip tie to hold the D4R2 in and I will uh, hit up, hook up my DVR and we'll go and do some FPV with this little machine. See how it flies. So here we are one of the problems is that the battery leads are so damn long they get in the way. So what do you do with that? Right let's I'll try and maneuver the battery lead back a bit so it's not all hanging out the front like it otherwise would be, but nah, I'll have to hang out the front, here we go, a little bit of a line of sight first, in the self leveling mode, Ooh, if I can get it sitting on the grass, in self leveling mode, just to try it out, so here we go, arming, and off we go, there we go, has a drift to the left, that's a problem that um, has been noted by other reviewers of this thing, and again, I, maybe it's a CC3D problem, I don't know. But it's um, certainly an annoyance. So that's alright, this line of sight seems to be okay. Let's uh, bring it in and do some FPV. 
Let's try some FPV. There we go. So I'm going to use the Hobby King 800 milliamp 20 to 30 C battery. It's small. I think the weight of the cable is more than the battery. But we'll put that in and see how we go. It's not a high C battery, but this little quad shouldn't draw very much. So let's try it out and see what happens. Choice of two hats, doing the land and right. up. I'm good, ready. Yep. Here we go, we're coming down. The camera's really not that good, I'm afraid. It's, that CMOS is just crap. It's in and out of. And also, the video quality from the cheapo antenna isn't good either. But, um, it's certainly got some good performance, I'll give it that. This thing is honking. Full throttle all the way. I don't think I've ever had a quad where I keep the throttle pegged all the time. The first one. Tuning is okay, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. I'll come a bit closer so we can hopefully see the quad. Probably a bit far away to get on the camera at the moment. Yeah, this CC3D is very sluggish. The tuning is suitable for beginners, but you wouldn't want to race with it. It's quite slow. Let's come and see what the punch out's like. I'll bring it round and we'll do a punch from a standing position. Hover here and we'll do a punch. Flying in right acro mode, of course. Here we go. Yeah, it's not, it's not four cell stuff, but it's, it's not too bad. Yeah, the control is a bit loose, but never mind. As I say, when you get a bit far away, it gets a bit snowy, gotta say. I'll be changing that antenna if I'm going to use this thing, that's for sure. There we go. The battery held up pretty well actually, I'm quite impressed with that. Okay, so I wasn't expecting much from this little quad and you know my first impressions were quite um, disheartening but having flown it, oh I gotta say I'm actually quite impressed. Um, when I finally managed to get it into rate mode, finally managed to get the flight controller configured. Um, it's quite a zippy little beast. I'm gonna Quite enjoy this now the flight controller cc3d it's pre-tuned probably adequately for people who are just getting into the hobby they want something nice and stable and slow but it would require tweaking before it was real fun for someone who's had a bit more experience but yeah i've got to say it, it is a nice little quad fits in the palm of your hand battery's a bit warm but um yeah the cc the cmos camera as i said is crap on a day like today it's really really hard because the changes in picture brightness are enormous this little antenna doesn't get you far i was running out of video and i'm only 150 meters away um but hey i gotta say i like it i like it a lot and if you've got the money to spend on one of these i suppose you'd probably like it too as long as you've got the persistence 
to set it up properly. Now I'd say to DYS, if DYS are watching, which I'm sure they are, please do a version with a decent flight controller. This, I'm still not happy with the CC3D. It's, it's loose, it's, I don't know, it just doesn't lock in. I'll try some tuning, but as I say, because of the problems connecting this to my computer, tuning is going to be a pain in the backside. I can't just tune it as easily as the nays. It's going to be a real nightmare. So mm, if you put a CCD on here and a nays 32 in there, preferably one of the F3 versions, and a decent antenna on there, then you've got a little winner. It's a really nice, cute little quad. There you go. Right, thanks for watching. Time for me to get back to the bench. Bye for now.